Well, hello. It's Father Fred again. Elaine and I are with Elizabeth Hodges here at Fort Clark. It's an old fort that was built in the 1870s. This is the background here is the amphitheater at the fort where they had, uh, I guess they did plays and entertainment here uh, going way back. And uh, Fort Clark's located on Highway 90 in Brackettville, Texas, which is between San Antonio and Del Rio. And it's wonderful being here and seeing Elizabeth again. Uh, today I'm going to talk about what happens in Epiphany when we accept our Lord and the light of Christ. Uh, it creates some displacement uh, because it takes us from the world that is, is full of rioting and problems and uh, a lot of joys and sadness. And it takes us into the kingdom of God uh, with the light of Christ. And so there's a displacement there. Uh, you may have experienced some displacement feelings lately with uh, uh, attacks on our government in uh, Washington, D.C. Or, or a Capitol building, uh, I, I, felt, I felt displaced by that, but then I had to remind myself that I'm trying to exist in God's kingdom, and that's a different place uh, from what happens in the world. And we exist in both places, in the world and in God's kingdom. Uh, I prefer to concentrate on the kingdom life the word epiphany has several meanings. It means on one hand an appearance or manifestation. Or it can mean a sudden intuitive perception or insight into reality which might result from an ordinary event. An event that uh, brings us into epiphany was the three wise men who came to see Jesus and worship and honor the infant. The Epiphany celebrates the one true God is made manifest and eventually the one true God appears to non-Jewish Gentiles as Christianity becomes a widespread religion in the world. At the time Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist at the River Jordan, he was probably about 30 years of age. And that was the beginning of his formal ministry, which lasted approximately three years. The epiphany or manifestation at this baptism was the opening of the heavens and the voice of God recognizing Jesus as God's beloved Son. I imagine Jesus experienced some feelings of displacement after that uh, because he was leaving his ordinary life that he'd had in Nazareth and in Galilee and entering into a new phase, a phase of ministry. God often blesses us with appearances and profound insights, but we must be tuned in to recognize them a prayer that we could offer is, Holy Spirit, help me with the wisdom and perception that I may recognize God's voice in the daily events of my life. In 1963, when I bought a motorcycle on my way back to my ship in Barcelona, I was in Rotterdam, Holland, and I found a motorcycle that I thought uh, would take me back safely to Barcelona where my Navy ship was docked. Well, the man that sold me the motorcycle saw that I was not a great motorcycle rider yet. And uh, he said, why don't we just put that motorcycle on the train and you can ride with it down to Barcelona safely because that's a very dangerous highway that goes down through France and down to Barcelona. Well, I 
I didn't want to spend the money to do that. So I decided, well, maybe God was speaking through that man. I don't know. At that time, I was listening mainly to my own voice. So I refused to heed his voice. As a result, I had a terrible accident in a storm. Spent two years in military hospitals recovering from the injuries I suffered in the accident and the explosion that was caused by the accident. Since that accident, I've been much more attentive to God's insights for my life. It's important to remind ourselves that these epiphany manifestations of God didn't always occur in important places and to important people in the world. The manifestation of God for the three wise men that they saw was in a back country, a backwater of Israel in Galilee, in Nazareth, and in Bethlehem. These were all small towns and backwaters. We often don't realize that God appears to everyone equally. It doesn't matter if you live in a backwater or a big city or where you are. Tom Wright in his book, Mark for Everyone, says when the living God looks at us, at every baptized and believing Christian, he says to us what he said to Jesus on that Epiphany Day. God sees us not as we are in ourselves, but as we are in Jesus Christ. God looks at us and says, You are my dear, dear child. I am delighted with you. I'd like to talk a minute about the displacement that happens when we accept the kingdom of God over the kingdom of the world. What is that moment like when we accept Jesus? The moment when we are called by Jesus to repent and change our lives. It is a moment of both glory and disruption. Why? Because it is the day of the Lord where we enter into life in the kingdom of God. This call can be with us anywhere that we live or travel. Henry Nouwen in his book, Seeds of Hope, says that the gospel confronts us with the persistent voice of God inviting us to move from where it is comfortable, from where we want to stay, from where we want to feel at home. He says that the Christian community, if we are doing what Jesus calls us to do, gathers together in voluntary displacement. Displacement, says Webster's Dictionary, means to move or shift from the ordinary or proper place. This is what the early disciples were doing when they left their fishing boats 2,000 years ago. Voluntary displacement is a way of life rather than as a unique event. Paul describes Jesus as the one who voluntarily displaced himself. He said, His state was divine, yet he did not cling to his equality, his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and become as we are. Thus God became a displaced God to whom nothing human was alien, a God who could fully experience the brokenness of our human condition. And we certainly experienced that recently with those riots in Washington, D.C. 
It isn't following our displaced Lord that the Christian community is formed. Do we have to drop everything to be a follower of Jesus? Probably not. Rather, we might begin to identify in our own lives where displacement is already occurring. Displacements that may be the first indications of God's presence. I felt displacement back when I was five and six years old when my father was sent to the South Pacific in the Army during World War II. Would he make it back, I wondered? I began to take church a little more seriously then. My prayers became more serious and I began to pay more attention in church. Most of us have experienced painful displacements, moving from one area to another to separate us from what has been familiar or comfortable. A change from one school to another, from a happy work environment to a more competitive one. Also ideas and images that have been important to us are pushed aside and no longer appreciated by our children or neighbors. Old traditions and celebrations are suddenly abandoned. These changes can, changes can often threaten us and give us feelings of being lost and alone. I often feel displaced by my computer. <laughs> COVID, the pandemic, gives me many feelings of displacement. I'm not with my friends. The meetings that I ordinarily would go to, the entertainments, everything has been disrupted and displaced. Often these rapid changes and new developments make, make us feel uprooted and tempt us to feel bitter and resentful. Our task then is to allow these displacements to become places where we can hear God's call. This is especially hard to do with a displacement that is completely out of our hands, over which we have no control, such as the pandemic. But then we realize, as we pray, that we do have control. There are ways to deal with it. Social distancing, mass. These are ways we can deal with that displacement. The question is, how can I come to understand and experience God's caring actions in the concrete situation in which I find myself? God always calls, always asks us to take up our crosses and follow. But do we see, feel, and recognize God's call? Or do we keep waiting for it to happen the way we want it to be? God's call as we experience displacement is not something to do or accomplish, but something to recognize. Just as I needed to recognize God's voice in that man that sold me that motorcycle when he warned me of the dangers of that highway. As we recognize God in our daily lives, a conversion can take place. A conversion from involuntary displace, displacement leading to resentment, bitterness, resignation, and apathy to voluntary displacement. Voluntary displacement that be, can become an expression of discipleship. We do not have to go after crosses, but we have to take up the crosses that have been ours all along. To follow Jesus, therefore, means first and foremost to discover in our daily lives God's unique vocation for us. Jesus' vocation was to become the epiphany of God's manifestation to the world. 
He trained disciples who went on to establish His church. The church where this displaced God who became human still reigns and leads displaced people like you and me into our unique vocations as the people of God. Thank you for being with me today. It's been a pleasure and it's been wonderful to be here at this place, this amphitheater at Fort Clark. Thank you for being with me. God bless you.